Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back. It's Jordan here. Ah, I got back from uh, Brookville, Chicago about a week ago and we finally caught up with uh, all of the content that we produced there. So today we're going to be talking about our Lego room and some of the inspiration that we've gained uh, from Brookville, Chicago. We're also going to be uh, maybe placing the roller coasters that we just built in the amusement park and uh, making some changes here in the Lego room. So I've got my lovely camera lady here with us. How you doing, Jose? Hello. <laughs> Hello, I love that. Hello. Yeah, so uh, it's been a while since we've talked about the Lego room, hasn't it? It feels like it's been an eternity since we've done like a Lego City update or something like that. It's just because we've been so busy, uh, you know, <laughs> going to Brickworld and building roller coasters and making videos and editing all of the stuff that we had from the show and everything like that it literally took like took us all week to accomplish all of that stuff so not a whole lot has actually changed in the lego city at all so today uh, we're going to be discussing with you some of the things that i learned and i'm inspired by uh from brick world chicago and something some takeaways some takeaways you will. Yeah. exactly what did we take away that's exactly it and uh one of the most complicated uh things that uh, I've been thinking about is bridges and what do I mean by bridges? I'm not, I'm not talking about Jeff bridges. I'm talking about uh, train bridges and uh, You know, we saw some pretty crazy ones uh, in particular. We saw some crazy train bridges at uh, Empire Lug. They had a crazy uh, landscape set up and it was like a, a Western landscape and a beautiful river that was probably more than 48 studs winding through this landscape with some beautiful trees everything like that if you've watched the videos uh, then you know what i'm talking about if you haven't watched them well here's a little snippet of it now so yeah they had some beautiful stuff here it looked amazing and this is one of the main things that i was inspired by for lego city and in particular i loved their train bridges now the interesting thing about their train bridges is they were actually not built in spot so that's what i really liked for example they would just be like sitting there just like this. So you build the bridge and it's almost like its own module that was just sitting there. And you could just take that module and remove it anytime you liked or anytime they liked, which I thought was really neat. And then I was talking to uh, Easy when I was down at Easy Craftsman to Eric's. Uh, we were talking to him and he was like, man, we got, you got to do that for your Lego City. I was like, yeah, man, we got to do that. We got to do that. We're going to do that. And he discussed the plan and everything like that. But then I came back and I'm like, man, maybe this isn't so easy. Because if we were to have a train bridge, so rather than the train curving here and going back around this way like it does, and then around there and under the tunnel, it would come straight across here. There'd be a train bridge that's built out of Technic. It's almost like a truss bridge and it would come here. But then we got to think, okay, well now there's got to be a train track right here that's about 16 studs wide. So this, would in theory have to move forward 16 studs. That's the zoo. So technically we could probably do that because um, back here, and this is gonna get a little bit, uh, you gotta think. And the reason I wanna tell you this is because this is complicated and I don't know how we do it. So I'm, I'm just sort of thinking out loud here. So technically there's train track right here. This would no longer be here, right? So we would be able to shift all of this 16 studs forward. So having the train bridge over there by the amusement park and having it come behind whatever buildings are here eventually is no problem. But now we run into another problem. When we have another train bridge right here, well, now we're going to run into this pillar and this pillar can't move. So <laughs> what do we do there? We can't do it because of the pillar. And there's also... Beach. Beach. Water. Water. Sand. Sort of hard to like move the beach into like the middle. It's sort of awkward. Mm -hmm. But I mean, yeah, so like we could slide the beach back, but then once again, we can't move this pillar. So that's not going to work, right? So then I'm like, wow, that sucks. So we can't do it because of the pillar. Uh, it can't come on the edge of the table here unless it, the train like turns through here, but then it's just going to consume way too much space. So we can't do that. So then I started thinking to myself, well, what if the train turned and the bridge was the train turned here maybe and the bridge was right here and then it sort of ran through there all the way across but 
I just don't know if it's going to be doable. I want to build these bridges so badly, but I just can't wrap my head around how to do it with this current layout based on the position of the zoo, based on the position of that pillar, based on the position of the water, not only in the beach, but if you look right over there, there's A2, we got more water uh, that's going to be... Uh, in the way be as an well. an issue of connecting here to here. It's water to water. It's water to water. So it doesn't really, it's not going to be optimal for our current layout. So if I want to build train bridges, everything has to change, especially if it comes here and then it turns around this way. Well, now it's going through the campground. It's interfering with our Ninjago stuff. It's making us have to change our mountains that we worked so hard to create. So one of the biggest inspirations that I took away from the show was to build these train bridges, but I truly don't know if it's going to work. Also, another big like con, I guess, is it would be a larger allocation of trains in the city. As we know, we only have them kind of like over in this area, kind of around the amusement park and then on, kind of down Main Street there. Mm -hmm. But if they were going everywhere, then we're losing that 16-inch plate. 16 kind of, stud, yeah. 16, 16 stud, stud plates plate, yeah. all over. Yeah, it's true. So, so we're it's gonna a lose... bigger allocation and we lose, yeah. we technically lose space for yeah. the city by adding more train. So I want to talk to you about another idea. If we just come right over here, Jose, and to maybe turn the camera to the uh, campground. So the campground is something that we still have to mills plate and we have to work on. Now I do have an idea involving a little creek that's going to run through the campground. And what's going to happen is the creek is actually going to start way over here. There's going to be, so the water comes down the waterfall. There's going to be a pool of water right here where Ninjago is. And the creek is going to run along the backside. All the way down. All the way down and connect to the ocean. And I think that's going to be really cool because we're going to be able to use our mills plates to create a really fantastic looking creek. So that's another take or another thing too, is if we do the trains, we're pretty much changing up that idea. So if we do the train bridges, it changes up everything. And I don't know if I'm ready for that, like I want to be, but I just don't think we have the, the uh, space to, uh, to allocate to it. And once again, we're always putting trains in and then we're like, oh my gosh, these take away, take away so much room and then we're taking trains out. Another thing that we want to do in the campground that I took away from uh, the Empire Lug booth is trees. So we have a lot of different sizes of trees. We've got little trees, we've got the pre-made trees, We've got larger ones, we've got the ones with the arches, and we've got all sorts of different trees in our campground. Now, one thing that's sort of disproportionate to all the other trees, there's actually two of them, but the first one is this large tree right here, which is the treehouse. So this treehouse tree is way too big, right? It doesn't match the vibe of the other trees in the campground. And the other one that's fairly big too, actually, believe it or not, is the Winnie the Pooh idea set. It's got a fairly uh, large tree as well. Now, one thing that I took away from the show is that we can build trees. We can build massive trees. They can go as tall as you want, and they're still going to match the scale. Because when you look at like the redwood forest, or you look at any trees in our neighborhood, or my old neighborhood even, in my old house, it had trees that were, holy crap, like four times the size of my house, right? So when I look at a house, you can build trees this tall. It's still realistic. So one thing that we're going to do when we redo the, um, the campground is rather than having 15 of these, we're gonna make five monstrous trees. And these trees are gonna be the same height as this here. And it's really gonna make this area look a lot more realistic and it's gonna look pretty cool. What do you think of the massive tree idea, Jose? So yeah, larger trees, but less of them. Yes. And it'll just be it'll crowded be like with large Pretty trees. much the same allocation of parts, Yeah. but larger trees, less of them. Does that make sense? So that's another thing that we took away from. And then the... they'll obviously still be filled in with like our little saplings and the like the prefabbed yeah. ones. So I think that's cool. I think it's a really good idea. And I'm, I'm really excited about that. Um, other than that, I mean, we're going to continue with our mountain. We're going to continue uh, adding more detail. Uh, Jose and I have a really cool plan for the Ninjago area. We also have a really cool plan for... The zoo, we're going to be shifting the uh, the way the zoo is uh, positioned over here. This is going to be changed up. Uh, and we're starting to develop our plan for uh, the roller coasters in the amusement park. We're going to place those in this video here uh, right away. But the first thing I want to do before we do that 
is actually move something that I've been meaning to move for quite some time. And it was actually over there just by my feet. So we will place roller coasters in just one moment. But first, let's take care of this. This was actually Paul's idea. He uh, messaged me and said, like, hey, man, why don't you take this sign? This is the Brixie name plaque from the Brixie wall, which is massive. And why don't you put it elsewhere in the Lego room? And he came up with a pretty cool idea. Now, originally, I wanted to put this thing up on the wall. And I wanted to put it uh, way up there somehow. But I don't know if I want to start punching a bunch of holes in the wall and mounting it, you know, up there. It just sounds like a nightmare. And then if I want to move it, there's a bunch of holes in the wall and it's just more permanent. But he suggested that Not to I... say that we can never do that. This is sort of just like a... Mm. It'll look good for now, at the very least. Yeah, that's true. I mean, not to say... Yeah, exactly. Not to say that it'll never go back on the wall. But he suggested that we put it right over here. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I got to move some stuff, but I'll show you where he suggested us to put it. Just right up here, but I got to move all our other stuff. We got to move this. On this ledge right on here. This ledge, yeah. I'm pretty upset though. I wanted to put my one and only collectible collection there. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You wanted to put it's your. It's going to take up the spot now. Your hard rock bears, right? I can try and move this thing and we'll pop it up there right now. It does have these 1x16s sort of popping out the side of it. So one day I'll have to rip this thing apart and get those one by 16 bricks. Make a slight adjustment. Yeah. But for now, might be a good idea to pop it here and get it out of the way. Yeah, so I think that works. It's a great storage spot for it uh, for now. Looking think, snazzy. Yeah, looking snazzy for sure. That's my, that's my go-to word. Uh, looks a lot better here than it did on the ground. Yep. That's for sure. Thanks again, Paul. Appreciate it, man. Great thinking. Wonderful. Let's go move some uh, roller coasters. So what we've done is we've placed a loop coaster over there. It sort of brings more height to that corner. You know, it's like a big wide open corner. I do wish that the elevator portion of it was where the loops were, because I think if it was right tall in that corner there, it would look pretty cool. Now, we've decided to keep the original coaster down here for a couple different reasons. A, because it's not as tall. Uh, B, because it's really wide. It's actually wider than our platform. Whereas this one here sort of has like a, an inset portion by the loops where the entrance is. So we're actually going to be able to build some sort of grounds up top there where people can actually enter the ride. Now, you can see there's a big hole right here, obviously. Uh, that's because <laughs> I still have to build a little small filler platform that's about 15 inches wide uh, if we want to have this one in the corner. Uh, so one thing I learned about, uh, you know, Lego layouts at the show as well, it wasn't an amusement park that taught me this, but it was uh, Lord of the Rings layout, is that it looks really good when it's like really dense and really clustered. And like, that's what I'm going to do here. Or we're going to do here when we build our amusement park. I think we're gonna have it really dense, really clustered, a lot of minifigs, a lot of narrow pathways. A lot of our older stuff was like really wide pathways, really wide open. And spread and out. Spread out, exactly. But I think with the new layout here being constrained by space or has space constraints, I think we're gonna be able to create a really cool dense layout. But that's where we think we're gonna put the loop coaster because it's tall there, it looks good. Uh, we just have to work on <laughs> our platform coverings and stuff like that. We got to build more of those. Got to decide if we're going to do a rock edge there or if it's going to be like cement or what we're going to do. Also, we need to build the staircase up top there as well uh, and, and figure all that out. <sighs> lots to think about, lots to do. Uh, we've got these two sets over here too. We may as well have a quick look at these. Uh, so these are the postcards. Uh, we've got Beijing. These are the new creator postcards. New set. And then we also have New York. So in addition to all of this Lego room vlogginess, why don't we build these and have a quick look at them as well? How's the build going, Jose? It's going pretty good. That's good. So she's working on New York right now. Mm -hmm. And she already finished up Beijing. So there's a sticker element on the bottom there. And it also comes with the Chinese characters as well, right? Yep. Yeah. And then and I, I believe this is the 
Temple of Heaven. Um, and then obviously the Great Wall, and that kind of winds on the whole backdrop as well. Oh, that's cool with the ingot pieces. Yeah, I didn't realize from the photos, it didn't even occur to me that that's what that was. But mm. the green is the, the yeah. grass and whatnot. Yeah. And then you got the, the, the temple, yeah, and the cloud. And yeah, pretty neat little set, you know. It's fairly deep. Just deep enough to give it that 3D effect. And similar to like Van Gogh, you kind of built this backdrop. Mm -hmm. And then that just sticks on with snot bricks. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Interesting set. I, I'm curious to know if they're going to make more postcards. I don't see why they wouldn't. You know, maybe like Paris. Seems to be the start of a theme. You know, the Eiffel Tower. What else could they do? Anything. Anything, <laughs> really? West then, Edmonton Mall. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah, it's uh, major cities. pretty cool though. Yeah. So we'll check out New York when she's done. So while Jose continues to build that, uh, check this out. Beside the grand piano, I've placed the uh, jazz quartet. I don't know if that's going to be its final position, but for now, I think it looks pretty good there. Hey, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Got some open space here that uh, we'll work on filling, but it is filling up, isn't it? Holy crow, the shelves are looking dandy though. I will say, looking dandy, looking full. Wow. <laughs> There's even General Grievous up there. So uh, another thing that we got to work on is the under table scenes. So there's a new castle coming out, right? Yep. New castle. Massive castle. I'm very excited for that one. So obviously we're going to have three castles for under here. Uh, I got to decide how we're going to build our platforms. Actually, Moon Man commented the other day with a good idea. He said, why don't you just take a two by four? Connect it to this leg, screw like whatever through the leg, and over there into another two by four, or into the other end of the two by four, and then use that so your legs are sort of like there's no legs, you know, it's sort of like floating, floating tables under there. That might look pretty neat. I don't know how I feel about screwing through a four by four post though. Going to need some extremely long screws to make that happen. I don't know, but we're going to have to build our platforms from under here. Uh, one thing that we took away from the show, too, is just crazy medieval scenes. I just love the medieval scenes. They were so good. So amazing. Oh, my gosh. I cannot wait to get started with that project. Same with the train yards over there. The train yards were insane. And we've got to build our train yard over here. We've got to get everything connected and looking snazzy down here. That's for sure. Oh, it looked so good. It was so wild, like all the different train yards and all the different medieval scenes and stuff like that. So you've got lots of stuff that we got to work on, you know. I don't think this is going to be so difficult. Uh, we've got to re-render our Disney Castle platform. This has got to change because we don't need the second train tunnel, and this might be a bit too large. Then we've got to re-render our mixer platform as well. And once we get that done, then it's pretty wide open. Everything's sort of going to be modular, and eventually we want to mill split it. But, I mean, even when it's not on mills, it's pretty much fine. We can move this stuff around pretty easily and just fill in minifigs and, and carts and trees and bushes and all that stuff. Pretty funny thing, uh, I was looking under here the other day, and we were looking for all the uh, minifigs for the roller coaster. And we couldn't find them in our minifig stash, that's because we forgot there's a huge one under here with all the trees and stuff for the amusement park. So when we go to build the amusement park, that's where all our stuff is, remind me, hey? So what do we work on first? That's the big question. Do we do the amusement park? Do we do the zoo? Do we do the under table scenes? Do we mill split the residential area? Do we fix our table platforms and get the modulars going? <laughs> do we do the boat yard? <laughs> uh, the campground? The Ninjago area? The cliff edges? What do we do next? Just a little bit everywhere all at once? Maybe, maybe that's what we do. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, honestly, probably gonna work on that Ninjago area and uh, this here just because it's, you know, we've got a good vision. <laughs> but I mean, it could all be done. It's just a matter of time and and stuff like that. Hey, look, Jose's got this all done. You're not mic'd up there, Jose. What the heck? You gotta get your mic on. Can't hear you. You're gonna hold it like that? Okay, so yeah, yeah you got New York here. Tell me about New York, Jose. New Same York. Same basic concepts. It's got the backdrop comes off. Uh, bridge, Statue of Liberty. We've got a little boat in here, mm -hmm. a little taxi. This is a printed piece, printed tile. Same cloud. You got the city as the backdrop there. That, I believe, yeah. is the World Trade Center in the Eiffel Tower. Eiffel Tower? Not the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Sorry, the Empire State Building. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. Looks snazzy, eh? Same sort of deal as Shanghai. Or sorry, Beijing. Yeah, very cool. Definitely yeah. prefer New York. Yeah, me too. Also, the figure just adds to it. Mm -hmm. 
That looks really good. Good job. So yeah, we've got lots of stuff going on in the Lego room today. Lots of things to talk about. Lots of things to think about. Let us know what you think of our little vlogaroo here with the dual mics for the first time ever. Uh, let us know what you think by comments below. Remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.